This episode of Relativity is made possible through the support of Stephen and Catherine Farris, Bill Cariola, and Michael W. McClure. And by listeners like you, who support us through Patreon. Learn how you can support this series and get exclusive content by visiting patreon.com slash relativity. 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 I just found somebody's waste container. Somebody who was floating right where I am, they tried to throw it away and it went into this porthole instead, right into Junction Omega. And they either didn't know that it had happened or they didn't care, but whatever else we can do out here, I can take this little treasure trove of bacteria and DNA into the lab and we will know which one of my friends and colleagues tried to blow up this ship. Relativity. 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 Episode 20, in which new communication is established. So you have the uh, container securely stowed? In my accessory bag with the seals locked. That was very good how you saw that and, and, and recognized it and realized what it would mean. Thank you. Well, it was the only thing in this whole tangle of tubes and wires and gizmos that I've actually seen before, so it kind of stood out. Tell us what else you see, specifically things that are clearly damaged. Oh, this entire cavity, everything behind this round doorway thing, it's absolutely packed with cables and tubes and the occasional machine. And sitting in the midst of it all is this weird glowing translucent cylinder that I have to keep away from. We have a photograph on our big screen of what that should look like, what the what the prototype looked like. Great, okay, great. So, so you can see where there's a big silver, uh, looks like a pipe that, from my perspective, it goes diagonally across the circle. Definitely, that is electrical trunk five. Well, in, in your picture where you see one solid silver thing, what I see here is uh, two things that used to be one thing. Uh, it looks like it was burnt or blasted in half because in the middle it's it's blackened and in tatters, and a few of the wires inside are still connected, but they're and splintered and everything around them is, uh, is spattered with something black. It's probably the liquefied remains of the insulation. Yeah, so, so this is why um, help me out here. A lot of the electrical processing for the ship is supposed to go through that cable. So we're guessing that somebody tried to destroy the relativity compensator and in the process damaged your source of main and auxiliary power. So the emergency lights had only stayed on because one of these smaller cables somehow managed to stay together for a while? Correct. It's an unlikely set of circumstances that essentially saved your life. I don't know what to think about that. Neither do we. Oh, and we're overdue for an external temperature check. Probably still in the single digits. Um, whoa, whoa, when, when did it get to be 65 Celsius out here? That's normal where you are. A side effect of the particle deflection under acceleration. Well, okay. But you're still well within the safety perimeters of the suit. Does there appear to be any major damage inside Junction Omega? Uh, yeah, there are several other... There are places that look like they're where something used to be attached, do you know what I mean? Frankly, we expected that. You still have the toolkit in tow? Uh, right by my side, the faithful hound. Do you see the photo cells on one side of its frame? Uh, yeah, yeah. Turn the entire toolkit so those photo cells are pointing towards the damage. Okay, I'm doing that, and, uh... Okay, yeah, now the big dog is looking at the burn-up cable. There's a button on the side of the toolkit frame. I, I don't know if you can see that it's yellow underneath the circumstances, but it, it's a hexagon. I see that. How many points are you tethered on? I am attached to Konyashini by two cables. The toolkit should have a free tether of its own. Uh, it does? Attach that to one of the handles. Okay, bit of a stretch, but yeah, it's on. Now release whatever you're holding on to. Uh, say again? I uh, know, j- just for a moment, so you can hold onto the toolkit with one hand and press that hexagon button with the other. Having trouble with that whole letting go thing. You won't drift away. You're traveling the same speed as the vessel. I know that in my head. I just, um... Okay. I'm doing it, and I'm grabbing the toolkit <laughs> like a life preserver. Okay, press that button, the hexagon. Yeah. And it's down, and... 
Okay, the frame is unfolding and there is a mechanical arm extending. Holy smoke. Two mechanical arms. Three. I did not expect that. Told you it's partly robotic. Wow. And it did made a beeline right to where... Okay, I guess with the photo cells, it, it sees where the damage is? Affirmative. It's programmed with a colossal amount of schematics and diagrams that will probably know exactly how to fix that cable. Yeah, those, those arms are already sort of touching the cable like, gently. I kind of feeling it out. They're, they're so supple. They're, re they're really more like tentacles than arms. That's right. They are pulling ends of the cable together and oh wow, one of them's, one of them sort of lit up. Oh, oh it's, it's like a welding torch. This is amazing. I have to admit it's fun to listen to somebody who's never seen a robot toolkit at work. I, um, these are pretty standard in outer space stuff nowadays, huh? Yeah, for years. Well, it's, it's all new to me. Look at that thing go. It is pulling new cables out of the toolbox and fitting them right in. There's, there's really not much for me to do now except watch. Once the cable is repaired, there will be things that that robot can't do. Good, good. Until then, don't get distracted by looking anywhere except for at what the toolkit is doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but seriously, once this is done and, 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 and all is well, we're going to talk about why space isn't black like it's supposed to be, right? And why I can see into the past and the future out here? Chris... I I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> if we succeed in getting our data channel back, I am definitely sending you some pictures because I feel the need to prove to you that I'm not just nuts. I, and yes, I know I have been hearing voices. I know that, but don't let that confuse you. We want the answers too, believe me. There's just nothing we can do about it right now. I understand. Yeah, no, nothing much I can do now either. So while I'm hanging here watching a robot fix my ship, uh, maybe you can tell me why the relativity compensator can't be destroyed with a bomb, uh, and but why I shouldn't get anywhere near it? Very simply, it's dangerous. Also, it's invulnerable and you're not. Wow. Okay, that tells me next to nothing. Well, that's the short version. The long version is very, very long. Yeah, I guess it would be. Now it's your turn. Tell me why you think the agency suppressed the news that they have developed safe and reliable suspended animation. <laughs> Only if you want me to get worked up into a white-hot rage, because believe me, that's a topic that we'll do it every time. That you feel sure their cryomodules actually work. That they really did make it trustworthy. They did. And that's why you have to use the one you have to give Sybil a chance for survival. We are not talking about that, because for one thing, it is not your decision. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying there's no reason in the world why you shouldn't. Listen, it's very simple. If there are only a few of these machines in existence, then they have to be prioritized. There are more important people in the world that need a chance. More important? I, uh, I mean, we can't use one for my sister just because she's my sister. Of course you can. That's not the... I was raised with an ethical code, and I believe in it. Mom and Papa told us that the community is more important than self. More important than family? Sometimes, yes. Well, I, I respect that. I really do. I, I, I think if the world had more people in it who believe as your mama and papa did, it, it wouldn't be the total disaster it is now. Exactly. At the same time, though, Sophia, this is your sister we're talking about. Do you remember just a few days ago that you asked me why I stayed right here at this desk when the, the bandits broke in and they shot two of my people and then they... I, I remember, of course. You asked me why I didn't run away. And this is why. This is the same thing. The community need is greater. My job isn't to run away and hide and take care of myself. My job is to keep you safe and keep the mission on track because the whole world needs your cargo and the, they need that for the, the aspect of the mission to be successfully complete. Well, that's never going to happen now because I can't do it by myself. That's ridiculous and we all know it. In which case, my job is to figure out how to get your ship working properly again so that we can plot a course that will bring you back home. I am home. This is my home. I mean to Earth. Yeah, I know what you mean. But first, we have to restore power to the vital systems of the ship. It won't be long now at the rate this little guy is working. Uh, uh, in fact, yeah, oh, oh, Sophia, I wish you could see what I'm seeing. If it's good, then everyone here would like to know about it. Yeah, some of the parts inside this, uh, inside uh, Junction Omega, they, they've got little lights on them, and I didn't know that until they started winking on. One by one, lights are coming on. There should be a general light, a sort of translucence that, that illuminates everything in there. Yeah, that would be great, but 
Oh, no. There, there it is. Oh, my God. Everything in here is so easy to see now. All right. All right. Now, you said um, th there are some places where a piece was clearly missing or destroyed. I see two of them, yes. One is very near the relativity compensator, and the space it left behind is uh, shaped like the letter L, or, or the way a knight moves on the chessboard. Are, are you sure? Konechny, stand by. Accumulator. All right. Chris, I need you to make eye contact with the toolkit. Seriously? Yes, get right into its field of vision. Okay. Wow. Uh, okay, doing it now. Uh, it sees me. That activates a voice link. Say very clearly the word accumulator. Accumulator. Okay, it's reaching into itself and it's pulling out a part, a little shining silver thing. That is incredible. Uh, it's one of the parts it actually had on hand. Yeah, or on tentacle, yeah. And it's handing it to me. Take it and try to fit it into the space you described. Okay, that's a... Uh... That's a little complicated because there's something in the way. Not the compensator, but a, just a pipe. But I think I should... Okay, should I, should it just snap into place? Probably. It depends on how badly the base was damaged when the other part was blown away. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it certainly seems to... Just... No. Uh, okay, it's secure. It is in place. Fine. Yeah. Oh, there it is. He's doing oh. it. Oh, you should see this. Konechny, we are seeing a flood of information on our big screen. Status of all the ship systems. Oh, and your location and your velocity. You're getting telemetry? Dr. Mason, I am looking at a display that shows your heartbeat. I can see the external temperature of your suit. You mean it? I would not lie to you. Oh, I, I'm getting environmental data from the habitat. Chris, you did it. You fixed this thing. Come on, let's be realistic. You and my robot friend here did all the work. Chris, the toolkit is not alive and it has no emotions. And I am not floating in space on my first ever spacewalk. You did this. I did, didn't I? I really did this. I actually fixed something on this ship. <laughs> you did? did? Oh my god, what a feeling. And you have been... Look, I think somewhere the spirit of a medieval shoemaker is punching the air and yelling, That's my girl! <laughs> or maybe that's Galileo doing that. <laughs> Either way, I am... <laughs> I'm going to astonish you now by telling you that I would like to go offline for a few minutes. In the middle of this mission, you've grown oddly careless, Miss Schumacher. If you feel that you can simply rest there for a few minutes, I, <laughs> I, I feel a strong need to go above ground and look at the stars. Mission Control, you have a go for that maneuver. What time is it where you are? About midnight. And believe me, the sky here can be breathtaking. I'd like to look at mine, too. Oh, uh... Should I not have said that? No, no, you go drink them in. With your permission, I'm going to turn around for a few minutes and look at the stars here as well. Uh, no suicidal ideation. Far from it. I, I seem to be responding to this phenomenon in an entirely different way than my captain did. To, to me, it's all simply beautiful. Then I think you should do it. Thank you. Trust me, Sophia, I will be here when you return. Because you and I have a lot more work to do. That we do. All right. This is Mission Control going offline. I think most of you heard that already, but I'm saying it again. I'm going outside. So just maybe ten minutes, but I'm I'm taking a break. Go do Good it. Good for you. That's the spirit. All right, all right, all right. There you are. <laughs> All my favorite stars. In the black void beyond. Why do I see black, but he sees something else? It, but, 
Where is that coming from? What's coming? Hello? Hello? Who is that? I... Sophia. No. <laughs> Sophia. It's impossible. You must remain connected. Papa? Relativity, episode 20, in which new communication is established. Star Delana Jordan and Lee Shackelford, who also wrote the script. Also heard in this episode were Dennis McLernan, Clarence Brown, Kyle Jones, and Stephanie Lindsay. Find out much more about this series at relativitypodcast.com. Relativity Podcast.